Oh, hey, how's it going? So we're gonna be doing the Q&A video today where I am answering all those questions that you guys asked a few videos ago. Before we get started, I just wanna say a quick little thing to thank you guys for all your support. I know there's thousands of you. We're over that 3,000 milestone now, and that's uncomprehendable. It's just crazy. I just want you guys to know that I do realize behind the thousands, there's individual yous taking your time to watch these videos and taking your time to comment, like share the videos, whatever you guys are doing. Like I really, really appreciate it. I'm grateful for all the time that you're taking out of your days to support this channel. It really does mean a lot and it does not go unnoticed. So thank you guys so much for your support. So I just want to say too, thank you guys for your patience with me getting this uh, Q&A video out. Like I said, I was working on some video projects and being very busy with that. We're also very busy doing house projects here and we were redoing some floors. So I am still in pain from that. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun doing that project as well. So, but now I've got some time to do this. So we're going to start answering your guys' questions. Alrighty. So the first question I got is from Logan and she would like to know what is the what is my favorite agat I've collected so far? And it's actually a three-way tie. Well, it's actually like a, I don't know how many, multiple-way tie because I have so many amazing ones that I have found. But the three that I picked um, are a couple of my recent finds. This big guy, the very banded, beautiful, chunky agate we found a couple videos ago. And then same with this one, this uh, jelly agate. It's got amethyst in it that we found on the South Shore. Very beautiful, big. And also this little guy. This one is the very first agate I've ever found. And as you can see, like I said, it's a tie. <laughs> Size doesn't matter. They all hold the same amount of value in my head. And I love, I love all these so much. That's why I still collect the little ones because they're all treasures and um, they're just beautiful. They're super, super great to look at, super fun, so. All right, and next question is from Alex, AKA Agate Angler. His question is, besides rock hounding, what other hobbies or recreational activities do I enjoy? So I'd say besides rock hounding, I also like to golf. I haven't done it as much as I'd like to, in the, or as much as I have in the past, but I still really enjoy it. And along with that, I'd say I do enjoy playing acoustic guitar for my son and other instruments. We also have a banjo lele. <laughs> That's an acquired taste. <laughs> and I used to have a mandolin, and I'd like to get another one someday, but I do like playing a bunch of different musical instruments. So... And besides that, the other thing that we've fallen in love with moving up here to the Northlands is hiking. There's so many hiking trails around here, and it's extremely enjoyable being outside, seeing all the beauty up along the North Shore, and we want to do some more exploring up the South Shore. It's really fun. Okay, so question from Christine. She asked, where in Minnesota can a beginner start? She says she's from the Twin Cities area, and what books would I recommend? So. First off, you're from the Twin Cities area. I am not very familiar with that area at all, so I'm sorry about that. But what I can say is maybe look into gravel pits and always get permission if you can get into there. And when asking permission at gravel pits, I would lead by saying, you guys, your company is not liable for me while I'm here. And even throw out there, I'd sign a paper saying, you know, I'm insured on my own. You're not going to be sued or anything like that, stuff like that. Uh, another place I would look is try to find gravel roads, and I've heard good things about the Mississippi River, but besides that, I don't know really any areas in the Twin Cities area. But if you do come up north, the North Shore is a great place to start. Beaches are always amazing, and you're by the big lakes, so you can't beat that. Uh, what books would I recommend? So my favorite book, I actually have it here is this Agates of Lake Superior, Stunning Varieties and How They're Formed. This is a great book. I got this one from our local library. And you can see how thick it is. It is full of amazing information all on Lake Superior Agates. If you're interested in getting this, I have this same book up on my Amazon storefront under books section. And I'll put the link to my Amazon storefront 
in the description box below and the pinned comment. So if you want a solid read on Lake Superior agates, this will blow your mind. <laughs> All right, question from Marlena. What is the next tool on my list to add to my arsenal of lapidary equipment? So it's kind of a hard one because I want to get a saw and something that is electrical to polish, not hand polishing. It was ridiculously too long to do hand polishing on agates. Uh, but yeah, so a saw, something to polish them that's electrical and or a tumbler. I'm kind of leaning more towards getting into tumbling stuff as well. So that's some of the stuff I'd like to add to my lapidary arsenal. Alrighty, question from Heather. What does your wife think about searching for rocks and does she enjoy seeing what you bring home? Let's ask her. <laughs> um, I have no qualms with it. I think it's a fun hobby for him to do. And I love seeing what he brings home every day. It's the first thing he does when he comes home. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's fun. I have no problems with it, and it's good for him to have a good hobby. And he loves every part of rock hounding, and even editing, he loves it. So, it's all good. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> all right, he got another question from James Bryant. <laughs> he asks, will you give me your entire agate collection, oh, and scoop? Um, no. <laughs> and it's scoopy. So just throwing that out there. Um, I wish I wish I had enough agus to give all of you guys and just send 3,000 plus packages out to everybody, but I just don't have that many in my collection. Um, I will say, James, you've been a subscriber for a long time, and your comments that you've left on our videos is they're pretty funny. You've made me laugh, you've made me cry, and I'm still curious how your sandwich was. <laughs> Question from Thirst Fast. He asks, if you could go anywhere in the world, full access to hunt for any mineral, what would it be? So I know you already know this, or he does, and a lot of you will know now. I love amethyst crystals. I think they're absolutely beautiful. And that's why I got so excited when I found this chunky amethyst agate on all those other amazing ones on that hunt in Wisconsin. So I think my first thought when I saw the question was with you up in Canada, rock hunting with you, doing some you know, crystal digging for those beautiful pieces of amethyst that you find. I think that would be absolutely amazing. So thanks. Alrighty, a question from Jennifer. She wants to know what my day job is. So I am a field service biomedical technician, which means I work in the field. I drive around the region up here and I go to different hospitals and clinics and I uh, inspect and repair medical equipment. And that's what I do every day. It's really fun. Um, if my boss is watching, really love my job. <laughs> um, seriously though, I really do love it. It's rewarding and I, I, it's really fun getting to work with my hands and fix stuff and making sure that these hospitals and clinics are whole and that their medical equipment is working the way that it's supposed to. So I really do love my job and um, it's, it's great. I love it. Alrighty, question from Don. Do I do a rock exchange, a way for rock hounds from around the world to share their finds with each other? I have been a part of some rock exchanges where I've sent stuff to other people from around the world and they've done the same to me. So it's been really fun seeing other stuff. I love seeing other minerals and rocks from around the world especially agates because agates are one of my favorite minerals and I love seeing the different varieties and I don't know if um, a lot of people know this um, but agates they come in many different shapes and sizes and colors from all different parts of the world so I hunt Lake Superior agates those aren't the same as any other agates they're way different from Montana agates or just south of us Fairburn agates in South Dakota even further south is Crowley Ridge agates in Louisiana Those are insane and then there's agates They're all over the world and they're all different and they all like I said They all come in different shapes sizes and colors So it is fun getting to see different stuff from around the world and I would love to be a part more a part of that uh, in the future all right, a question from Paul Carter. The question was kind of answered a little bit ago. Do I plan to get a saw at some point? Yes, I would absolutely love to. I have a bin downstairs 
and I call it my to be cut bin. So someday I can cut all the stuff in there and see what's going on inside. Question from Robert. Have you ever hunted in the, I'm gonna butcher this, Kawinu, Kawina, Kawini, Kiwina, Peninsula of Michigan. I don't think I said that right. No, I haven't. I've actually never been to Michigan, but I'd love to get up to the UP someday. That's the Upper Peninsula and do a lot of different kinds of rock hunting up there. So hopefully someday. <laughs> Kawini. I already a question from Alice. I'm assuming you're from the Duluth area when you ask this. Why are there Black Hawk helicopters patrolling the skies here at night? Have you heard seen them? If you are in the Duluth area, I know what you're talking about, and I don't believe it's Black Hawk hel 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 helicopters. They're actually C-130 cargo aircrafts at the Air National Guard base north of here, or east. I'm bad with directions. It's around here at the air base, and they're doing touch and goes, which means they're flying in to the runway, touching and going. So, and they're very loud. <laughs> so that's what that is. I think that's what you're talking about, but I think it's been a few weeks since I've heard them. So that's good because they're, they're pretty loud. All right, a question from Shannon. Where did you learn what to look for exactly? And can you recommend any websites or books for learning what kind of fossils are in Minnesota? So I'm in the same boat as you. I'm still trying to find good resources on fossils and stuff. I have touched base with a few people and they said the same thing, just start researching it online and getting into fossil forums or fossil groups on Facebook, stuff like that. Uh, one of the things that I love to do is like I said earlier with this book, I got from the library. I much would rather have something physical to read than looking at a screen and reading it. But the library with everything going on is closed right now, so I can't go get more books on it. But I have found some very old fossil books that have what looks to be like great information in them, but I need to be able to check them out to read them. So um, I would just say just start diving into the internet and uh, maybe check out your local library if it's open or when it opens. And the other part of the question was how do I know what to look for? It's just been finding stuff and asking you guys, what is this? And you guys are great about helping me identify different things that I find. So thank you for that. <laughs> Question from Pooty Pounder, Big Stuff 3 Mustang. When is your next giveaway? <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully soon. Um, maybe when we hit 4k we can do a giveaway. We get a big package to send off to one of you subscribers. Let me know if that sounds good. <laughs> Alrighty. Question from Will. He goes, what's your favorite creek to hunt and uh, I'm gonna be totally honest I've tried going to a lot of creeks and rivers lately I'm not that good at it <laughs> I need to get a lot better at it so I'll still be going back but uh, definitely just need to keep practicing get better at it. so I I don't have a favorite creek right now uh, one that I know that there's good potential at is Logan Creek which is one that I'd love to get back to and if you've ever seen the videos at Logan's Creek. I think I made two videos there and watched some of the uh, shots of the scenery. But it's just such a beautiful creek. Such, I love going there. love hearing the sound of the creek going the whole time while I'm rock hunting. It's really fun. So I guess that would be my favorite creek. All right, here's a couple questions from Mary. She, go, or she asks, where did you get your love for rock hunting? Was it something you learned from a parent or dot dot question mark? And then another one, do you have any books or guides to recommend for beginners? I'll put the link to the Amazon storefront where you can find this in there. Like Spirit Agates, great book. Um, there's also other books in there as well that are really great. Uh, some are educational, some are just stories of amazing finds for agates. Um, but where did I get my love for rock hounding? So as a kid, I think it's just a kid thing. I was always looking through rocks, finding the cool clear quartz pieces or flipping rocks, looking for fossils and stuff and finding petrified wood when I lived in the western side of Minnesota growing up. Um, but the passion that I have right now that you guys have been seeing on this YouTube channel, it started just over a year ago when um, we moved up here. I was asking people what's there to do up there and they, you know all the classic you know hiking, hunting, fishing, mountain biking, everything that there is to do up here which is there's an insane amount of fun stuff to do up here that's why we love it so much. But one of the things a uh, friend said, go egg hunting. I was like, what's well, an agate? 
Oh, Google it. So I Googled it and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> those are beautiful. So I went out to a beach. I thought, oh, I'll just try it out, you know, and ignite my inner child and go check it out. Didn't find anything because I was imagining I was going to go to a beach and find something like this. And uh, it's not how it goes. <laughs> Obviously, if you've been watching, it's not how it goes at all. So I didn't do well at all. I was like, I'm just going to go. And as I was walking out, I looked down. So I rocked. that looked a little different. And I found this guy. This little beauty. Super banded. I'll put some pictures up of this. It's really amazing. And that right there, that little thing ignited my passion in egg hunting. And initially it was just egg hunting. And then along the way, I started finding other stuff. I'm like, this is amazing. What is that? And then I do research and I found, oh, it's free night. Oh, porphyry or jasper, whatever. You start finding more stuff and it's a snowball effect of just finding so many treasures out there. And it's never going to end because how can you, how could it end? There's too many great things to find. So thank you for your question. All right, question from Carrie M. Chardy. Will you get a rock tumbler? I think so. I think someday I'll get a rock tumbler for sure because I have a lot of stuff that it would definitely look better tumbled. And the way that stuff that I've seen when it's tumbled, it it's insane. It really shows a lot more bands and just smooths it out and you can really see the great characteristics in these agates and really anything else that you tumble and then she asked um also asked are you more interested in just the hunt um, i would say i am a little more interested in the adventure and going out exploring and finding the stuff compared to lapidary but they are both extremely fun but i do like going out and exploring i like being outside and being in nature and the lure of the hunt is extremely fun because it's not a guarantee that you're going to find stuff. You, like you go out and I've had it before. I go out, I don't find stuff. It's not a guarantee. You're not always going to find stuff like this. You know, it's not, it's not how it goes. That's not real rock hunting. You know, it's, you're not, <laughs> you're not always going to find the big stuff. And if you did, it wouldn't be as fun. It wouldn't. Be like, eh, eh, I know what I'm going to find. It's not fun. So you go out and you find smaller stuff like this. And I'm still happy when I have days like that. Because you're still finding stuff. But you know there's more out there. You just need to keep trying. And treat, keep exploring. And that's why the adventure is so addicting for me. So, yes. I'd say the adventure is a little more more of a... Got more lure? <laughs> it's more exciting for me right now. But, yep. Alrighty, got a question from Gwyn. She was asking about some of the rocks or minerals that I found in the Q&A announcement video, especially the skip em something, which is the skip and Adam agate. And that's actually a really rare agate that's exclusive to the Minnesota shoreline. And that's what I've read in um, some of my books. It's in this book right here. This is another rocks and minerals book that I have and carry with me all the time. And it goes into some good detail about it, but it's believed that during the creation in the formation of that agate that there is um, an atom missing in, I believe, the water. Um, what does it say here? Missing an atom in the water molecule, molecules during its formation. So that's why it gives it its kind of more jagged look and stuff. So it's a very unique and rare agate. I haven't found that many of them. Probably I can count them on one hand. All the skip and atom agates that I found. Alrighty, and another... Um, Alright, question from Jackie. This seems as if you have so many different agates in your region. What is your favorite and which is the most rare that you've found? So in our region, they're all Lake Superior agates, but they all have sub classifications. And I would say, which is my favorite? Um, it's, it's probably a tie between two and same, I wouldn't say they're the most rare, but the, my, one of my, or my favorite ones to find are the wow. eye agates and water level agates because most of the time, generally speaking, in nature, nature is without perfectly straight lines. They are without perfect circles. And what I've read about water level and eye agates, if you really look at them, they are perfectly straight lines in its banding and the eye agates are perfect circles. And that blows my mind that during their formation they created something perfect. It's just, it's amazing. And like I said, mind-blowing when you think about it. So, 
Yeah. Question from Jenny. She asks, what do you do with all the agates and other cool rocks that you find? How do you clean, process, polish them, and where do you display, store them? Bonus, which find is your favorite? So at the beginning of the video, I did show some of my favorites, but I'll show you, um, not in detail, but I'll show you kind of a lot of the questions that you asked. Uh, so what do I do with them? I put them in jars. So this jar, it's not that not that many in there. These are some of my best of the best agates that I found in 2019. And so just for reference, this jar, a little heavier, is that same best of the best for this year. So as you can see, there's a lot more in this one than this one. So I'm getting a little better. <laughs> so I do put a lot of them in jars. I put the smaller ones that I find in some old like wine bottles, you know, with the cork. I think it looks kind of cool. But most of the time I put all my finds in jars or tubs and I have a little display downstairs where I have all my rock stuff um, that I put them down there. So if you guys want to see that kind of stuff, let me know. Maybe I can do a showing you all my stuff kind of video. Uh, but how I process them, when I do get them home, if they're from like, if they're from the beach, uh, most of the time they're already pretty clean. I don't need to do too much of them. I usually just rinse them off and get all the sand and stuff off them. Uh, but if I get them from like gravel roads or gravel pits, I'll bring them home. I'll put them in a, I don't know, bowl or something big enough to fit them all in with a mixture of like dish soap, vinegar, white vinegar, and hot water or just water. And then I mix it up and put them in there. I let them soak for like a day or two. And then I just scrub them off, and that's that's what I've done so far. I've heard a lot of different techniques and ways to go about it. I do like the vinegar and water and soap route because it's the most, uh, or I guess it has the least chemicals and stuff in it, so it's not harmful to like breathe in the fumes and stuff. So that's that's what I do with that. All right, a question from Ray's Days. A couple questions actually. Um, first one: What is your favorite find of all time? I think if I had to put it on, like, down to one, it'd probably be my most recent find, this guy. Um, it's got amazing bands. It's got a lot of white in it. It's got a lot of oranges in it. And the chances of finding something this size are so slim. Um, if you look into different books that tell you the chances, a lot of these books... We'll talk about, you know, your odds of a one the size of a pea is like one in a hundred. You get up in size, one in a thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. That's of like one in thousands of rocks. So like the chances of finding that, like you have better odds playing lottery tickets <laughs> or scratch offs. You know, like it's the chances of finding this were very rare and I just got lucky, stumbled upon it. It was just sitting there. And it, in that little spot where I found it, there was actually other footprints. So somebody just missed it. Like, they were so close. They just missed it, but I found it. And it, it was just so exciting. Obviously, if you saw the video, summer reaction, it was really fun finding that. Um, and it it's my favorite because of how rare it is to find. Like, it's not like that all the time here in this region, in the Northlands, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Because, like, spirit agates are extremely picked over. They've been picked over for decades. People have been rock hunting these for a long time. So I've been rock hunting for over a year, uh, just over a year. Um, and that's, it's taken me a year to find that one that size. And I know there's bigger ones out there. I just don't know where they are. So that is my favorite find, um, if I had to put it down to one. Uh, if you could go rock hunting with anyone, who would you choose and why? So there's a lot of different rock hounds out there that I'd love to go rock hunting with. But for that question, I'm going to go with Celebrity. <laughs> and I think I would have to go with Tom Hanks. But only, only if he brought Wilson. Because then him and Scooby could hang out. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, I also asked, what is my favorite rock? Lakes Pure Agates. Um, yeah, they're, they're just... Uh, so many different sub varieties of like spirit agates that come in so many different colors and for them to come along with you know amethyst and other different crystals and stuff it's just you're not gonna get bored of them so that they are my favorite
Oh, oh, Ed. Ed asks, are you a Vikings fan? On second thought, maybe I don't want to answer. Go Pack Go. No Pack No. <laughs> you cheesehead. <laughs> um, yes, I'm a Vikings fan. And it's just as hard for you to hear it as it is for me to be one. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Question from Sherry. I think I'm saying that right. How hard is it for you to squat down to get those stones with Noah on your back? Um, it's not too hard because I use Scoopy and um, I just scoop it up and then lift it up and grab it. So I always got to have Scoopy with when I have um, a little man on my back. So yeah, if you do want to know where I got that scoop, I've had a lot of people ask me. I've tried finding it to put on my Amazon storefront with all the other gear I use. Uh, but that one, I think, is exclusively sold at kingsleynorth.com. And if you just search on there, 42-inch treasure scoop, you'll find it. They also have one that uh, bends, or you can attach it in the middle and it folds so you can stick it in like a pack. So they got some really cool stuff on there. Alrighty, question from Manistee Rocks. He's got a couple good questions for me here that are solid. <laughs> Um, he says he's never heard of a skip and atom. Uh, that's because they're only exclusive to Minnesota, like I said a little bit ago. Uh, general composition of it, I believe it's the same with all other agates, microcrystalline quartz. So, um, what causes the banding in LSAs? I've done a lot of research for the longest time, you know, reading multiple books, and um, especially in this book. Like I said, um, this book has got some great information on LSAs. I used to think I knew, and then when I read that, I realized there's a lot of different theories on the formation of agates. So if I were to tell you what I thought, it would just be a guess. Um, I did do some research, as you asked, <laughs> for me to do my homework. And I'm going to put a link in the pinned comment below as well. Also, the description section on a good website that I found that kind of gives you a really good understanding of it, because I'm just going to butcher it. But basically... They were formed in ancient lava flows, and through cooling, they filled in pockets, and somehow the banding formed. Like I said, it's not truly known. That's why they call it the Agate Enigma. And then um, as they got popped out of the host rock and moved around through erosion and the glacier that came through, that distributed it through the region all the way down. I think I've even heard as far south as Louisiana. So they're distributed really far south. So along the Mississippi River. So, um, I think I got all your questions, bud. Another question from Alice. She asks, where, how did you learn all you know about rocks? It's a huge collection of doing research online, reading books, um, asking people questions, following different pages and groups on Facebook, and all that stuff. Just a lot of a lot of research and talking about it with you guys. Right, question from Rose. She asks, where would you suggest rock hunting in Minnesota for a first timer? And she said she's coming from Wisconsin. So I would say if you're coming into Minnesota, um, stop along the North Shore and just hit up beaches along the way. If you can find open gravel pits, that'd be another great place to start or even gravel roads. Um, you can find them anywhere. I have found them in our driveway in town and found some in our backyard. So they're everywhere. Uh, you just got to know what to look for. If you're doing gravel pits and gravel roads, bring a spray bottle. Um, that'll help out a lot. I already got a question from another day. What other new areas or locations, if any, do you plan on hounding shooting videos in the future? And also, do you plan to expand your focus for other things besides agates? So first off, I'm just going to say, for a while now, I have been finding more than just agates. Primarily, I do want to find agates because they're my favorite. So I just, I'm always on the lookout for those, but I'm also on the lookout for porphyry, jasper, prenite, or prenite. I'm not sure. Somebody correct me on which one it is. Um, and then also amethyst. I do find some, have been finding some. So yeah, I'm definitely broadening my horizons on the whole realm of rock hunting, but still, I'm always going to love finding the Lake Superior agates. 
And as far as filming in other locations, um, I'd love to get back down to Arizona to do some rock hunting down there. Hopefully in the next couple of years I can. And uh, with this whole thing going on in the world where we can't travel as easily, it kind of puts a hamper on heading to places outside of the country. But there's definitely some places I'd love to go do some rock hunting. So hopefully down the road can travel to different different areas, do some fun stuff. It's a hamper on. Is that the right word? Hanker? Damper. Damper, not hamper. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah. oh. Question from Renz. What do you do with all the stones you found? Like I said, I put them in jars, um, put them in bins, and I do want to go and reorganize it all. Like I found a lot of nodules. I love to take and find, or I love to. Yeah, find all the nodules that are in the different jars and put them in just one thing, agate nodules. And like maybe go down eye agates, water level agates, fortification, paint, all the different sub varieties and organize that as long or as well as all the like jaspers, prenite porphyry, all the other stuff that we found along the way and just have it a little more organized. But I knew, like I said, just put them in jars and bins down in the basement. <laughs> all right. Question from Jesse, a.k.a. Rookie Rock Hounding. He asks, did I have any hobbies before rock hounding as a kid or any time before that? Yes. So if you've been following my channel for the, a long time, at the very beginning I talked about we moved from eastern North Dakota up to the Northlands of Minnesota. But before I lived in eastern North Dakota, I was a Minnesota resident, so I've I've always been a Minnesotan, technically, and I only lived in North Dakota for a year and a half. My wife's the North Dakotan, so <laughs> um, so Minnesota, I grew up in Minnesota, and if you don't know Minnesota, which I'm assuming, Jesse, you don't, <laughs> um, Minnesota is a huge hockey state, so growing up, it was hockey. Everything revolved around hockey, and... If I wasn't playing hockey games, I was at hockey practice. If I wasn't at practice, I was at the rink shooting pucks. If I wasn't at that rink, I was at an outdoor hockey rink, just playing a pickup game of hockey. If I wasn't there, I was at our house shooting pucks in the garage and putting dents in all my dad's stuff in the garage. If I wasn't doing that, I was playing knee hockey with friends or playing NHL 99 on my N64. So it was all hockey for the longest time growing up until uh, towards the end of high school. When I stopped playing and I got into snowboarding and skiing and other cold winter events that we do up here to keep uh, winters more enjoyable. So that and like I said, golf, I've been golfing forever and then also doing some hunting and fishing. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So here's a question from John. Uh, he's talking about uh, they've never been naked hunting, but they'd love to look for cool rocks and fossils with their children. Where are some good spots in the Duluth or North Shore area I'd recommend? I know the most populated place is Canal Park. You can still find them. I've We went there one day, there was a ton of people, and I found a piece of coral uh, about this big. So that was a really fun fossil to find. And if you've seen any of my Canal Park uh, rock hunting videos, you can still find good stuff there. And even along some of the beaches in Leif Erikson Park, there's some good beaches hidden in there. And then as you go further up, you take the... Uh, North Shore Drive up, there's beaches there. And if you make your way up to Two Harbors, Burlington Bay Beach, that's where I found my first agate. And there is, there's a lot of good stuff at that beach. And yeah, you just follow the North Shore, you'll find spots. And each one's gonna be a great spot to head to. All right, here's a question from Drogi Pie. She, she asks, what would be the most amazing find, whether it's a specific kind of agate or other mineral? I would say if it was an agate, I'd like to find an agate geode that has amethyst points in it. That'd be like the Grand Slam <laughs> that also has bands around it and stuff. Um, and if it wasn't an agate, I would just love to find in a, a good size amethyst formation with beautiful purple points. It'd just be, I love amethyst, so that would be really fun. I already questioned from Rob. He asks, were you stationed at Grand Forks Air Force Base or did you just live up in North Dakota? So like I said a little bit ago, I was a North Dakota resident for a year and a half, but I lived in Minnesota. I grew up in Minnesota. So 
there's Moorhead, Minnesota, where I grew up, and then Fargo, North Dakota, and Fargo has an Air National Guard base, and that's where I, I, wasn't, I wouldn't say stationed, because I was Air National Guard, and I did that for eight years, so I was not up in Grand Forks Air Force Base. I went up there for different uh, tasks and stuff, <laughs> but yeah, just in Fargo at that Air National Base there. I also want to say thank you for your service. Uh, I know you said you were stationed in Minot. Why not Minot? So, thank you. Question from Jenny. What do you do with all these agates? Jars. <laughs> Jars, and I put them in bins. The to-be-cut bin, to-be-polished bin. Uh, during the winter time when I can't get out as much, I like to do some polishing on them and stuff like that. So, yeah. Alright, I got a question here from William. I'm asking about if I've rock hounded in Colorado. I have not. Um, it'd be fun to someday. It'd be fun to rock on everywhere someday, <laughs> but, um, let's see. Where do I go to find gravel pits? And if I do find one, where do I get permission to rock on? So a lot of the gravel pits that I've rock hounded in have been word of mouth. Somebody's told me about it or, hey, you should go check this place out. And it's like, oh, thank you so much. A lot of the time though, people don't share that. So I've been very blessed to have been given, uh, some secret spots to go to um, if you do find a gravel pit that you think would be good I would just suggest calling them asking if you can rock on and letting them know that they are not liable for you while you're in there and you'd be willing to sign a paper saying so and just trying to keep the rock on name good and if they say no it is what it is most of the time they're probably gonna say no because it's a, a lot of the time it'll be active operation and they don't want you getting in the way of equipment and stuff, but sometimes I've heard people are like, yeah, that's fine, you know, just stay out of the way, kind of a thing. So, um, I know there's some other websites where you can find where pits are at, or one of the things that I just do is look on GPS and start finding these pits, and then if I drive by, I'm seeing if they're open or, you know, private property, whatever it is, and then going from there. So, hopefully that helps. Alrighty, so... I think I answered all the questions. If I missed a question and you want it answered, or if you have another question that you want to ask, feel free to ask it. I'll try to answer them in future videos, even while I'm out rock hunting on an adventure. So thank you guys so much for your questions. It was really fun. I hope I uh, helped you guys out with some good tips and stuff like that, and you guys got to know me a little bit better. I also want to say again, thank you so much for your guys' support. Um, I know I always say, I love going out with you. I really do feel like I'm with you guys on these adventures. And I say that this is our channel. It is our channel because without you guys, it's not a channel. So thank you guys for everything that you do. You mean a lot uh, to me and to our family. You guys really do hold a place in my life's priority list. That's why I love, you know, why I make these videos and try to put them together in an enjoyable way for you guys to watch. And Again, thank you for taking the time to watch and comment and everything. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you on the next adventure. Bye.